John Favreau talks about, guess what, The Mandalorian and what it's all about. Dave Filoni will be directing an episode of The Mandalorian, and we are excited about, you guessed it, The Mandalorian. It's Jedi Council time. Here we go. All right, we're on. <laughs> Good to know the monitors are not here. I don't know. We're over there, we're over yeah. there, we're over there, we're over there. It's Jedi Council time. I'm Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, or Harloff Minor, whatever you want to call me today. That is totally fine by me. And I am joined at the Council today to talk about all things Star Wars by the returning, the conquering, Fifo Diaz, Emma Fife is here. Hello, Hello Emma. How it's, are you? You know, it's great to be back, I honestly. Back. I feel like this is a great day, too. There's, like, a lot of Star Wars news we to talk about. Stuff, so. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's rock it out. Let's rock it out. And someone who rocks out every week with me here on the Jedi Council, Mr. Kylo Ken, Ken Napsack. Hello, sir. Uh, I am almost done with my coffee. Yes, sir. Uh, at some point, could you share a LaCroix with me? <laughs> Do you want one? I got you addicted to them. Yeah, uh, they be the tangerine and the apricot. I got the mm -hmm. apricot. I got one of those I, well, here. So maybe I'll give you one of those. Yeah. All right. Make good. my day. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello to you all, as we are going to get into our Star Wars uh, movie news. And I can tell you that I'm thrown off by the monitor, but we'll, 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 we'll start off with Star Wars movie news. And I think that the droid's up there. If he is, great. If not, then whatever. Hey, oh, there, 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 there it is. There I am. Droid was on there. It's movie news time. And there's some movie news inside of connecting everything happening, but this is really going to be about canon stuff today, other canon stuff, because of all the big news that dropped. Ken, again, I don't want to go over too much here because I talked on Rule of Two, by the way, if you don't know, Mark Fernandez, Mark Riley, every, uh, what the hell was yesterday, Wednesday, every Wednesday on the podcast feed and the podcast YouTube channel, The Rule of Two, I was a, a guest on that show and we really had a full on discussion about this particular topic, Ken, which is... Uh, that uh, Kathleen Kennedy was got, got a contract extended for three more years, yep. which actually is, uh, by this point, older news for us to discuss. Yeah, sure. So it's been discussed ad nauseum else, elsewhere. Probably all of us have had a chance on some podcast or a bus or a train or a car to talk about this subject. But let's uh, broach it here on Jedi Council. I'm going to, for anybody who hasn't heard my take, I, tell, I said it on Collider Live. I said it on Rule 2 yesterday. The, I'm going to just give you the, the footnote version of it. And, and I'd love to hear your thoughts mm -hmm. on this particular thing thing. Um, I have been very vocal in this uh, fact that I think Kathleen Kennedy is one of the best producers of all time. And for people, and I saw someone yesterday is like, oh, we, uh, we made a comment. We like her as a producer. Like, Why? She's ruined Star Wars. As a producer, she has not. Producing movies is a She's one of the best of all time, and you cannot deny it. And what a producer of a movie has to do is find find the directors. If there's problems, replace those directors. Make money on your movie. She has done that four out of five movies or whatever it is. She has only missed once. She has made money in regards to producing films. I have said it here many times, and I will say it again. She is not the person to be running creative um, at Star Wars. And it's not, that, it's, it's not that I don't think she's capable. I just don't think she loves Star Wars in a way that should be running the actual narrative and the other question is why would she want to do this if she doesn't love it like truly love it if she and I don't think that these three years means she's here for three years I think what this means inside of this three years is that it's they have Disney and, and Kathleen Kennedy respect one another they made a deal here's three years there is no way she's going to finish out this entire thing and she's going to leave on her own I think she's going to close out episode nine shoot the basket leave and then take a job that she truly wants to, she's going to crush it and she's who's not going to want Kathleen Kennedy as a producer You'd be a moron not to want her as a producer, and they're going to bring someone else in. But whoever they bring in at Lucasfilm to run Lucasfilm, they have to have a Kevin Feige type person. Man, woman, doesn't matter who it is. Got to have someone who is just is around for every single type of Star Wars canon thing. Kathleen Kennedy not being around for that Rebels thing, I think, really spoke a lot. She was just doing films, making movies, and that's what she wanted to do. Emma, where are you at with it? Well, I mean, there was no doubt in my mind that they were going to renew her contract because, as you say, if you look at her track record as a producer, she's made them a bunch of money. So there's, there's really nothing to say about it. I mean, I... I I personally like the direction that Star Wars has gone under Kathleen Kennedy's sort of eye, if you will, um, which is essentially that I feel like she's really introduced Star Wars to a new generation, which is what I felt like it was with The Force Awakens. I mean, there were a lot of people whose biggest criticism of it was, it's too much like, you know, episode three, which I... I don't disagree with, but I also don't necessarily think is a you bad. Four? I'm sorry, yeah, episode four. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, you know, I don't necessarily think that that is a bad 
thing. Uh, I, I, I don't disagree with you on the point of her not necessarily being as involved as, as she, you know, she maybe should be in terms of like having her hand in all things Star Wars. But I mean, I think that she's done a good job. That's just the way that my uh, personal opinion is. Yeah. I, I mean, especially from the point of view, and, and one of the things that I appreciate both uh, Marvel and Lucasfilm both doing is bringing in these unknown actors and bringing in a more diverse talent pool because people are going to go see it because it has Star Wars attached to it. And and so all of that is a positive thing. But I, I, I don't disagree with you that she might not necessarily be super passionate about Star Wars. I think she likes Star Wars a whole lot. Otherwise, yeah. why would you do this job? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot to... I, well, why would you do this job is also because, like, why would you manage the Yankees? You know, why would you manage... You, obviously, you're going to love baseball and you sure. love filmmaking, right? And I think that she is going to do one of these things where she is going to take the ball, she's going to run with it, she's going to win championships, right? Sure. But I think that there's something to be said with a franchise like Star Wars, where you've got to be an Uber, you got to be an Uber fan as far as if you're running the whole thing, because of because the problem is, I believe she's running, she's running Star Wars and in an old school mentality like a producer would, right? And saying to um, directors, JJ, you make your version, go do it. Ryan, you don't like all that stuff? That's fine. There's no particular narrative from from seven, eight, nine. You want to switch things up? You should do that. What's your vision? I want to give this to you as your as your director. Do it. J or Trevorrow, you want your own vision? You do it. And for a filmmaker, that's great. And that's that. You it sounds like the dream, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is, if you look at, and I always bring up the Edgar Wright stuff. Edgar Wright was attached to do Ant Man mm -hmm. years before the MCU was the MCU. Okay, he had his vision. Sure, we want an Edgar Wright Ant Man because there's no narrative. When the narrative was set inside the MCU, Edgar Wright just doing an Edgar Wright movie didn't work for the continuation of what they're trying to do. Now, when it comes to standalone movies, there's no there's no narrative put in yet for Star Wars. But the, the saga films, there is, and there was a problem. There was a disconnect. With, I'm not saying that you know you can't say that that Episode Eight wasn't a great wasn't a great movie. If you think that it was fantastic, but there was a disconnect between seven and eight clearly, um, and I think that they there there needs to be more of a creative head linking it all together, having a narrative. But Ken, what do you think about uh, Kathleen Kennedy renewing? You think she's going to stick around for the next uh, three years, or you think she's going to be? Uh, that I don't know. That I don't know. I'm I'm very happy with this decision because again, it comes down to are you currently happy with Star Wars overall? I think. You know, people might be. Uh, the numbers are there. Uh, yeah, again, uh, as far as a, a, a specific creative, yeah, I could see that. I, I disagree fundamentally with most of everyone in this building about the connections between <laughs> seven and eight. Right. I just do. Yeah. I think the emotional canon is so thick in all these things from the books, the comics, the movies, everything. It's all there yeah. if you write it down and follow it. But that, that's me. Um, and i not surprised by this. But to the idea that you're, you're proposing here that we've talked about it. Is there someone else that needs to come in that could help her? Yeah, I yeah. think that's possible. Totally. I don't think he's the dude in cowboy hat no. No. because he likes space whales and puffer pigs. <laughs> but um, I, I definitely think that everyone goes to the Marvel thing. Everyone goes to the Marvel thing as they should. Sure. It's the template. It's also different. A Thor, you could be a Thor fan. Matt, can get, Matt Key can be a Doctor Strange fan. And they're different worlds. They've mm -hmm. just done a great job of taking from hundreds of years of comics, 75 years of comics, and put them into this new world. Star Wars has different standards yeah. Yeah. Because, well, because it's this one one thing. And because by know? and large within Star Wars as well, when you are dealing with even creating new saga films, you're creating original stories. Whereas you look at something like the Marvel Universe and as you say, Ken, they're pulling from source material that's years and years of comics. So, I mean, even, yeah. even to your point, Christian, of Kathleen Kennedy bringing in these filmmakers with these interesting creative visions and kind of letting them do their thing, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing and i'm and i'm you know i'm i'm very much with ken on yeah. the on the like emotionally the journey made sense to me because especially if you look at okay so why because jj set luke up to be this sort of hermit in isolation so why and i i thought that ryan johnson did such a good job of explaining that in a way that really resonated with me emotionally as a as a human being so yeah see i'll, I'll just push back a little bit on the not being a bad thing i think for when it comes to standalone films it's there's there's no there's no consequences for because the thing is if Ryan Johnson sets up something in eight and 
right. was, that's my version. And then nine, whoever's doing nine, or the J. J. Trevor goes, well, now what do I do? Because right, no one, right. it, like, and I know people say, well, they discussed it. They had conversations. Sure, J. J. read the script in the beginning, had a couple of notes, but they weren't in collaboration throughout the filmmaking. And then afterwards, too, there's... Right, no, that's the, correct. The yeah. problem is that when you do saga films, or whatever it is, you're doing a trilogy. There's a problem with The Matrix. There's a problem with any, any of these movies. You got to have a beginning and you got to know the ending. You have to in order for it to really work. You got to know where it's going and you got to be able to connect the dots. And again, there's, I'm not telling you that there's certain things that you can't, like, if you, do, if you like the way that Luke was portrayed in Ryan Johnson's version, right? right, right. And you can then link it up and go, look, I think it actually played into the ending mm -hmm. of JJ's thing. But that, even if that's, that's the case, that was by luck. Because it was like, oh, there you go. He was able to connect it. Ryan Johnson connected it to, to JJ. And now JJ, good luck. And, and now, now you've got to figure it out. Because there's going to be things in nine that he's got to try to connect it and make it work so it doesn't either retcon it. Or if it does, people are going to go, well, he clearly didn't like that. Right, right. It's a problem. As opposed to right. just being a clear narrative for a saga film. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I... I I I, I, under, I I understand that, and and like I we've heard some stuff with the Trevorrow thing, maybe wanting to keep Luke alive and everything like that. Yeah, I I'd never deny that no one they didn't sit in a room like we all thought they would at one point. It and was it sure. was early on advertised right. or thought maybe we assumed we look at MCU. I don't know. I, I you know again it's like we hear we hear well they formed a story group or there's a story group and we we assume they're all writing stories and we know that's not true. Uh, quit t tweeting poor Pablo. He doesn't right. write these movies. You know like. <laughs> right. Like that's not how it works. So yeah, I, I going forward, and that's why the timing following Iger. I'm trying to use my Disney hands. So I'm not, <laughs> yes. not I'm yeah, Disney you've hand multiple fingers. Yeah, right. yeah. this is Rick Caruso Grove hands. <laughs> Disney hands. Um, the timing with the Iger thing, where he kind of was like, ah, the release date was Me. my fault. Yeah. And then this, a few days later, yeah. I don't think that's a coincidence, that it's interview at all. Yeah. So um, uh, that also could mean that there's, there's, like you said, she hits the final shot and yeah. walks on sunset. That, that's a realistic scenario to They've me. They've also yeah. set themselves up to, to put themselves on a better trajectory here. If you look at yeah. where mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the series in general, that I believe the series is going to change and save the narrative overall of, of fans being in unison for Star Wars, and we'll talk about why in just a little bit. Um, they're not doing standalones anymore. I always thought that doing a solo movie or a uh, Boba Fett movie or a Job of the Hutt or Yoda was was w not lazy, but just too safe because they thought they thought these characters, everyone was going to see them. So those are the movies you do, and then they just got panicked by Solo, and that's that's why Iger mentions Benioff and Weiss. That's where they're going to focus on, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But 2020 or 2019, when the, whatever the hell, 2019 is 2019. when episode nine comes out. Yeah, mm -hmm. time's moving fast. And Kathleen Kennedy is going to hit that shot. You know it's going to make a ton of money. And if she wants to walk off, and then because this is what, and this is what I said on rule two, this is what she has under her belt when she leaves, regardless of what you think of her as a creative. This is what she has. She has three movies that have opened up in December over a hundred million dollars plus. No movie had ever done that before. Force Awakens. Okay, mm -hmm. she has put. She has done exactly what you. She has brought in um, a, a lead female character. She has brought in um, people of uh, a, a person of color as far yeah. as a, a ton. Mo of many people changing. of color. And I don't want to hear about agenda. These this this yeah. is these are characters that worked at the earth. And I and I'm not a big fan of Rose, but still exactly what what she had done there, giving opportunities. She was a part of that. Okay, so she has done that. She has done. She has had all these movies are the four of them have billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So she had one flub. She has won four championships. She has one bad season. She's about to have five championships. She walks off. She's also, you know, given filmmakers a lot of opportunity. These are this is a big win for her career. Also, too, we got Indiana Jones five coming up. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, let's not, yeah. Let's not forget. And this and this does I, I do where I do come down to you at the end of the day, maybe hey, we, we put uh, you know some people on the inside. We got we, there's a lot of people on the inside vice presidents levels uh, who have done a lot of good things with a lot of properties uh, if they want to step you know step up sure. to higher position because she's she's running Lucasfilm. She's not yeah. running Star Wars. Correct. She's running Lucasfilm right. and they've got finally maybe Indiana Jones five. Hey, maybe Willow two, maybe other things coming down the pipeline. So yeah, maybe that's why. And when you say that, doesn't it make sense though? If you're like this is what I ask. I would love to ask her this question. You know, the real like, and with cameras off, like to really, like, and no one would ever hear it except me. I want to hear. I want to hear. I would ask her the question of, you run Lucasfilm with all these properties. You just said, why wouldn't you want to put? Hey, you know what? So and so, you run Star Wars. 
you run this, right. you run that, I'll oversee all of it because I'm Kathleen F. and Kennedy and I'm gonna run everything else. Right, right. Why would you wanna be in charge of something that you are not just in the ground? Like we, and I t this is what I said yesterday, we get a chance to talk and breathe and love Star Wars every Thursday, right? This is what we do. It's like, she doesn't have the time to do that. No. She doesn't have the, she has, she's all, all these other movies though too, but you look at Feige, right, again, mm -hmm. That's his job, is to live, breathe, eat, marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's what he is paid to do and love. She's paid and to run all of Lucasfilm. Right, right. Give somebody else a chance to run it, and it, she's gonna be the one that gets the, look, she, she, while it was during her run, she put person A to run Lucasfilm since then. Since that creative head, look at what person A has done, and that's because of who? Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. Just a thought. All right. Um, what's next? Well, you want to stick in movie news? We got the big stuff to talk about. We yeah. got the. What is this thing? The second story is, is the about. Russian thing? What's that? The Russian bots? I don't want to talk no, about No, 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 no. Uh, we've got uh, the Obi Wan Kenobi spinoffs uh, scrapped after Solo Flop. We've kind of yeah. already just talked about that. Do, uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, go ahead. I, well, and also, I, here's the thing is I, I feel like, was there ever a hundred percent confirmation that either of those films were absolutely happening you know i feel like it was a lot of back and forth and and from my perspective and, and i agree with you on this christian on the individual solo films solo mm -hmm. included which overall i actually enjoyed but i still feel like i didn't need and i i just feel like you know with the standalones if they are going to do standalones at all do rogue ones you know what i mean do stories about people that we haven't met about things that we know how happened but haven't really explored i i never needed to see a boba fett movie the most interesting stuff with boba fett is when he's a kid in the clone wars you know what i mean and i've seen that already so yeah the only one that i wanted to see was obi-wan sure and it was I, and that's why i didn't mention it before when all well, the movies yeah. i didn't need i needed that one yeah. and they were close and i still were, need them they were <laughs> close to announcing it they had a writer they had a script regardless of what people said they had they they knew it was, it was going to go and if solo would have done well that announcement was going to happen, and I still think that they could have done that one, mm -hmm. walked off into the uh, Tatooine double sunset and been cool with it. Um, but, uh, but I'm not sad that we're going to get the Benioff and Weiss stuff first, if that is indeed the case, because sure. I am convinced it's going to be thousands of years beforehand. I believe we're going to see how Sith and Jedi started. I'm so excited about that stuff. If that is indeed the case, that's what these guys do, if you look at Game of Thrones. And if that's, we're going to start a new saga, Mm -hmm. then sign me up. I mean, I'm still mm -hmm. gonna wish that we could have gotten Ewan McGregor back as Obi-Wan, but I'll be able to sleep okay. Um, and I think that this was a smart move to scrap, but we also got a lot of crap though, when because Frosty had broke this right off the bat that this wasn't gonna happen. That it was that that they weren't doing it anymore, and then they were reports like, "So oh, that's not that's not what they said." And that's exactly what they said. They're not doing these anymore, at least for now. Now, five, ten years from now, who knows? But that's that's it. It uh, it, it, I'm okay with it, Ken. I'm, well, again, I'm all, I'm okay okay with these companies, these big companies. It's like a team um, changing on the fly. It's okay. To, you know, and I know they were developing a lot of different stories. Kenobi, Boba Fett, uh, you know, a Moss Eisley story, all the kind of stuff, because they should. Uh, all jokes aside, they should develop a gonk droid movie until <laughs> see if we don't want it or not. That's yeah. what they do. So uh, um, I, I like, though, that even, even, and I'm a huge fan of Solo, but even then for them to go, all right, something didn't connect. But whether it was just Uncle Bob releasing this in May, all right, let's pump the brakes. That's what you should do. That's what you should do. You know, sometimes, yes, stick your ground. We know as creatives, you know, uh, the debate about Captain Learning, should we have stuck our ground, stuck our ground? I don't know. You know, sometimes, though, it's okay to go, let's change up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I bring it up from time to time when I was working over at Joel Silver's company in mm -hmm. development. There are tons, because something you just said, there, there's a ton, they're a production company. There should be tons of things in development. There should be tons of ideas thrown out. There should yeah. be there should be writers that are met with to have pitches of so and so. A big director comes in and says, "I want to do a job of the Hut movie." All right. Well, what are you going to do inside that job of the Hut movie, big director? Well, I want to do this, this, and this. But then it's up to those Lucasfilm creatives to go, okay, I loved big director's idea, yeah. but how does that tie into the rest of the stuff that we're doing? And should we be focusing on that? Don't just try to make the big buck for the one win. Of course, the, the idea is to make money, but you got to think of the overall IP and the overall strategy of the brand. What's the best play? Pushing back these standalones and focusing in, if they are indeed focusing in on Benioff and Weiss, I believe right now is the right play. That's why I think that they're starting to get back on track if this in, is indeed the way that they're going. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So now mm -hmm. we're going to move on.
It's yeah. filmed, done, <clears throat> over. Now we're going to really dive deep as we get into that segment that we simply call What's the Deal with Canon? <laughs> um, Canon, it is that time of the show where we connect everything to the movies, but we're going to do it a little differently with comic books. We're going to do it with video games. We're going to do it with television series, and that is the big score this week. Ken, what's going on in the world of Canon? Well, all right. This is, uh, I'm not reading from one particular story, Christian. I'm just going on the fly here. We have the official confirmation from John Favre, the guy heading up the series for the streaming service that the show is called The Mandalorian. He says, after the stories, this is on Instagram, uh, after the stories of Django and Boba Fett, another warrior emerges in the Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian is set up for the fall of the Empire. Before the emergence of the First Order, we follow the travails of a, lo a lone gunfighter in the outer reaches of the galaxy from far from the authority of the New Republic. We know this is set about two years after the events of Return of the Jedi. Now, uh, uh, this came about, I think this absolutely came about, because uh, the team over at Making Star Wars uh, were on it. They were camped outside a set. I don't know how <laughs> Disney snipers haven't got them. Uh, stay safe, my friends. Uh, they were uh, getting a lot of good scoop stuff coming out that we're going to discuss here uh, about people rumored to be in the cast, uh, directing, uh, all those kind of things. But let's just dive on in. Let's take a peek at The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. I wish we could have seen Emma's face when you were reading <laughs> the... Uh, uh, the synopsis because that's how I feel inside this yes. big booming smile because yes 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 sign me up sign yeah. me up so much because of the uh, and, I, and I know you guys are sick of it I don't care that I think that this is the story that is this is a 10 hour movie we're getting a 10 hour Star Wars movie about a Mandalorian and I'm not surprised um, I could if I was going to predict anything and I believe that we might have that there was going to be Mandalorians in this or perhaps a lead character because John Favreau loves the Mandalorians. He was a Mandalorian yes. in the Clone Wars. Um, he him and, and I know how much Dave Filoni loves the Mandalorian era. Filoni's going to be very involved in this show as we've been speculating for a year now and we'll have another story about that in a little bit. Um, I love the idea of a lone gunfighter in the outer reaches of the galaxy. And we get to see, finally, what I've been waiting to see forever is, how does the New Republic run the galaxy? I thought we were getting that in the new trilogy. We didn't. But this is also, it's not me going, oh, well, the new trilogy blew it. No, this is because this narrative gets to explore that. Yeah. This narrative gets to show me how the New Republic works because we can explore politics of Star Wars inside of a television show. Politics in Star Wars, when done well, can be done masterfully. Claudia, Claudia Gray has has shown that. There, uh, James Lucino has shown that. This show, I'm, I promise you, if done right, is going to be the best thing we've ever seen from Star Wars. I don't know who's doing the music yet. I hope Kevin Kiner's Me doing too. it. Me too. Oh my God, I just drive around listening to Kevin Kiner's so Clone Wars good. soundtrack all the time, and it is. Whew, so good. Yeah, did you lose your mind over this I thing? did. I totally yeah. did. First of all, I would like to publicly apologize to um, former President Obama's director of speech writing, John Favreau, whom I tweeted at yesterday by accident. <laughs> They've got to uh, do something about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of times I've been like, oh, oh. they're both verified, uh, who I, I tweeted at yesterday, uh, imploring him to uh, put my character from Pencils and Parsecs on the show, because she is Mandalorian. <laughs> like, all right, you're in a, uh, you're in a speech. <laughs> but, no, but I, I absolutely love the Mandalorians. I love, love, love so much what Dave Filoni did with the Mandalorians in Clone Wars and then subsequently in Rebels. It is such a rich and complicated culture because you had this big divide of the people that were the pacifists, the new Mandalorians, and then your more sort of traditional Mandalorians, your Death Watch, etc. And I loved in Rebels, one of my favorite storylines was sort of Sabine's conflict with her relationship with the Mandalorian culture. Right. And I think that we're going to see some of that as well when you've got this lone gunsman just out there in the galaxy who's not like physically on Mandalore participating in sort of Mandalorian politics and whatnot. So I, I, I'm just so, so excited about this. It, it also makes me so happy that a bunch of people who've maybe never really explored Mandalorian culture at all are going to get a chance to experience it through this show because right. I know that not everybody watches the animated series and and it's I'm just so so excited yeah I mean, because I can just picture myself I'm, you, you can't my phone's gonna be shut off you yeah can't pry me away and I, I almost want I, I don't know how they're gonna release them if they're gonna release them binge or if they're gonna release them weekly whatever it is I'm gonna be locked into this because like the idea of what was cool about, because I, I'm so with you when it came to a Boba Fett movie, I never really needed to see it, but there was always something so intriguing about Boba Fett, sure. the armor, the culture, like, and now, now in canon, he's not, he's not a Mandalorian per se, Django 
Fett certainly is. Um, no, he's not. No. Django no, no, Fett no, no, no. isn't? George, yeah. George himself, want, but he stole the armor. Yeah. Django did. Django. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, they well, talk yeah. about it on Clone Wars, too. Oh, okay. Well, there yeah. you go. See? The, that was from George. He was I, really, I don't want them to be Panelorans. <laughs> so, well, then neither one of them. So they, they, they Favreau probably needs to be tuned into that, too. Um, <laughs> Whitworth needs to hang out with them a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But, any point, but the point is, it's still Mandalorian armor, though. The main thing, yeah, I think, yeah. to teach. It's the armor. Is, and this is also set out to casual fans as well, too. Absolutely. Because the hardcore Star Wars fans <laughs> will know inside <laughs> of, like, yeah. actually, um, actually, but Rebels. Uh, but it, Rebels, when you go that <laughs> yeah. whole storyline through Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're going to see that. And we're going to yes. see that in a little bit more of a serious yeah. tone. Because this is not going to be, I don't believe this is going to be towards younger kids. No, I, I think that, I think it'll be very much like Star Wars is in general from the point of view that it's perfectly acceptable yeah. for kids to watch for the most part, especially kids that have a good grasp on what's real and what isn't uh, in terms of, because, you know, you, you look at some of the saga films and they're, they're kind of violent. You can get some dark, yeah. yeah. So it's one of the reasons my, my daughter hasn't been able to, like, she watched a bunch so far, right. but then what my wife was like, let's pull back for a second. Yeah. And then when she's seven, then she could watch the rest of them. Sure. So. But I, I I do and she's th- nine, this one. Yeah. 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 But I do think that, again, it, it's not going to be aimed at kids, so you are going to definitely... It, it's basically like you're going to get the stories of Mandalore that they kind of set up within Rebels without sort of the lens of we need to make this appropriate for Disney XD. Yeah, it's true. Well, this is... and Because this is going to be... They also have the, the benefit, of this brand-new platform, to set up different tones on what, all their series too because I, I I totally agree with you I think it's going to be the tone's going to fit the saga films yeah. because they also have a Loki movie com- a Loki mini series coming out a Scarlet Witch um, mini series coming out and those will probably fit the same tone that the sure. MCU is in. so we're going to be able to get some more I would say young adult feel to it and I'm on board I can't wait Ken, you said, yeah. Do when do you think this? When do you, first of all, I want to get your thoughts on the actual show. Yeah, and then second, when does this come out? The end of next year. You yes. know, I got to be honest, and I'm looking at the stuff I'm making Star Wars the Net. They have a good roundup of all the rumors and uh, uh, stuff going on, and and I don't think anyone really knows the release date yet. Uh, we know the streaming service is in what 2019 December. Yeah. So I would imagine I'm mean, there. I know major. So it's October. Cast- is it December? I thought around that time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That would make sense. It wouldn't be in December if, yeah. if, if yeah. episode nine was. Um, major casting, I think, is still happening. This stuff, uh, some of the stuff looks like, uh, you know, the, the, the not the not the B roll, essentially, not, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we, we haven't got the official confirmations yet. Uh, I'm sure some casting stuff's been locked in place, and we're still waiting on other stuff, too. Um, uh, so, what was your initial question? Sorry, I'm trying uh, to look thoughts, at Thoughts I'm, on the Mandalorian. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Not gonna lie, kind of known about this for a bit, and I've been I just been biting my tongue um, of what this is about. It, it, you know how sources work in this town? Yeah. A couple weeks ago, I was interviewing a friend on my podcast. I haven't seen him a couple years off camera. He goes, "Yeah, uh, my friend's doing this thing," and he says <laughs> something that's had. I'm not even gonna say it. And I just went like this, and he goes. I don't know if I should have said that. I was like, I don't think you should have said that. Yeah. So I'm excited, and I'm excited that this is happening. This is going to be an interesting series. I love it. You know, I I, I wouldn't. Everybody's so excited. I wouldn't. Be upset. <laughs> I wouldn't be upset if this is something to do with Cobb Vanth as well from uh, from uh, Aftermath, the character that takes Boba oh. Fett's armor yeah. and goes and becomes a law lawman. I don't think that's the case. Uh, but if we get some kind of passing reference, I'd love it. Oh my god! I just thought about it. There's no way it's going to happen. But can you imagine if the first shot is is from after Return of the Jedi of someone picking up the armor oh. of Boba Fett and starting? Well, it could be because that's what I mean. That's Possible? What, yeah. yeah, that's what Wendig put in the, those those interludes in in the Aftermath. There's some of my favorite stuff because yeah that i mean the the armor yeah. is found and then malakili the rancor keeper is in there as well and yeah. he gets tied into it and you go to the sarlacc and the sarlacc exploded there's gaping holes in it and then the jawas picked up this armor yeah but we don't know if we the armor know. we don't know yeah we don't know so i'm, I'm yeah. look this this series i get it here fast yeah. i really cannot wait and there's other rumors and stuff that we're yeah. going to talk yeah. about so, that even adds into yeah, this. so let's, let's go to the next let's one. dive into it because because there there's uh the big rumor i mean we know uh, again if you want the whole scoop go go to making stars that's all i can say because there's just so much stuff going on here but I mean, the big ones the big ones yeah uh directors not final because a lot of, don't just just let it let it go uh, nothing confirmed we got Dave Filoni, which we're not surprised. We, uh, possibly <laughs> Alan Taylor, big Game of Thrones director. Yeah, he did go. What he did, didn't he do? Terminator Genesis. Uh, and Dark World too. Yeah. Um, 
And there's, well, there's these even deeper rumors about Tika, Tika Waititi, um, Werner Herzog, the great German documentary director and director of movies and sometimes actor, is rumored to be involved in sometimes. And then the big lead, unconfirmed, denied by his people, um, but I have reason to believe it's true, is Pedro Pascual, the Red Viper, Ober Martel, uh, in the lead. Is he the Mandalorian? We don't know. None of this is confirmed, just stuff coming up, but this... You know, event, some of this could be true, some of this could, could not be true, but it's just fun, great stuff, big information. Dump. Pedro Pascual, as the lead, as this lone gunfighter, as the Mandalorian, is perfect. I completely agree. I mean, because first, I mean, you just want the, like, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but the sort of raw sexuality of Pedro Pascal, yeah. like, he's just so charismatic, you can't help but watch him on camera, but he, he plays such a good good guy that you maybe question him a little bit. And I think yeah. that that is something. Moral compass is off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, moral yeah. compass is off a little bit. That's yeah. that's a really good way of putting it. And I just, I think that he would be such a perfect choice to lead this series. I hope he's in it one way or another because I just adore him. And I can't think of anybody else I would rather see in Star Wars, yeah. quite frankly. Yeah. No, it's pretty impressive. I mean, obviously, I think we're all Game of Thrones fans yeah. here. We all <laughs> talk about it at some point or other professionally. But uh, and a show full of amazing performances. Pedro Pascual may have been one of the best performances. Just oh, what so he did good. with the character. Yeah. That is... A little bit different in the books. It doesn't pop in the books as much. The I show, agree. Yeah, and the show, he just turned it into something else, setting up the audience perfectly for what happens. Um, so if he brings that to this, to the Star Wars galaxy, whew, yeah, absolutely, big win. Well, this is, again, this is another, this just shows and highlights the possibilities of what could be. Right. When you look at a, we're all three of us, big Game of Thrones fans, all three of us go, yes, absolutely, make him the Mandalorian, right? Mm -hmm. Even if he's not. It's like right, right. put him in there, but I think I think that making Star Wars is probably on the right path here, and I agree with you. I think that you're right that, that they were sniffing around, got the accurate stuff as they nor they usually do, yeah. and then we get the Mandalorian announcement. Yeah, last it, night. It, it, yeah, it, 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 that's why I say I, jo I joke, but yes, I, believe, I think you're right. I, I believe that when you start seeing stuff pop up, put it out now because these guys are going to tell what it's about, and we got to get it out there. Yep. And that's probably exactly <laughs> what happened. But the, I believe the Pedro Pascual thing is true. I believe he's going to be the lead character. But what it opens up these possibilities of think about this again. Think of the all we did a Star Wars draft for Schmoes back in the day when Force Awakens was coming out, and that was for one, two, a little over two hour movie, and all the people that you got, you got Andy Serkis. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Boyega, Daisy Ridley, uh, you know, uh, Max von Sydow, all these great people, right? Yeah. This is for 10 hours of material. So think of all of the people. And this is just season one. Yeah. Right, think right. about all of the people that could pop up and like, oh, Favreau's doing it? Oh, I can be in Star Wars? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. All these people that could come in. This is going to be something special and then let's jump into the fact that the, i'm gonna hit the dave filoni part then you guys can hit the other directors too but filoni to me is the one that i i mean second i heard this i said stamp it down lock it down filoni will direct an episode of this he'll direct multiple episodes of it to show his chops uh, in the live action stuff but the other thing is if filoni is able to give his creative input as a director and work as a consultant with favreau what has filoni done so well with rebels and clone wars linked to them Mm -hmm. Put them together in things that if you are a fan of those other things that he has done, he right. rewards you by saying, look at this. Remember this? Look at that character. Yes. That's going to happen in this Yeah, series. He also does a fantastic job of having standalone stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like you can enjoy Rebels without knowing everything about Clone mm -hmm, Wars. Mm -hmm. But if you've seen Clone Wars, it just makes rebels that much richer and i yeah. totally agree with you that i think that we will see that carry over into this series as well and I, and i mean it makes perfect sense to have filoni work on this because he was very much the person that put mandalorians in the position that they're in right now so it i, I am glad that he'll get to continue to tell that yeah, story I, I, as a total coincidence i've I was been rewatching rebel season three for some research purposes and going into the trials of the dark stabber Ugh. which is sabine's yeah, arc and everything yep. And it is, when you look, you can go on like Wikipedia, what we know in canon for Mandalorians mostly comes from Dave Filoni. Yeah. Now, with Clone Wars, and it went through George's conversations with him, I'm sure, and all that kind of stuff. So it, this, this is perfect sense, makes perfect sense to not only they be directing, that they probably had some conversations. Now, Favreau has said, he said to uh, Anthony Carboni on the red carpet uh, at Solo, even though, Anthony, we were like yelling and like, ask him something about it. Oh. <laughs> um, 
Favre did say he's had these stories around his brain for a while. Now, not like he was me in sixth grade writing, this is my episode. That's Clone Wars probably, right? But to Clone yeah. Wars has been, you know, what, debuted 10 years ago? Yeah. So uh, he uh, was pre Vizsla. Uh, we know he probably got really interested in, in the canon. And this time frame, it's a lone gunfighter going around. Um, and we, we don't know man or woman. We don't know that. We yeah. assume maybe Pedro Pascal, but again, these are rumors and his people have denied it. So um, I think this has to and will tie Pedro into... Pedro Pascal's people have denied it? They have denied it. But oh. what did our old friend uh, Katie Sackhoff say? If a publicist has to deny it, it's probably true. Right. Which brings me to the next point. Bo-Katan, yes. Katie Sackhoff, we've been saying it for a while. <sighs> you know Favreau worked with her on Clone Wars. Yeah. You know I it's know. in there. And because of Rebels, I really we need know her to be she's in still alive towards the events yeah. of well, A New Hope. Not only is she still alive, in theory, she should be the Mandalore at this point. Right. Essentially, that was the ruler. direction that she was going. Yeah. She's yeah. the ruler. She takes the dark sure. saber. She's it, the ruler. It's true. Yeah, I think Katie would, would be incredible. Without a doubt. Well, yeah. Katie also has a, has a new show on Netflix she does. right now that's coming out, another sci-fi vehicle. Yeah. So this would be... She's, it, even, she's, even if she's not a regular, the, the character Bo-Katan... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you no. know, you know, it's in Dave Filoni. That's story. what I mean. There's so many Filoni. St- like, who's he going to bring back? Yeah. Which voices will he bring? Sam Witwer will probably have a role in this. We hope. Um, there's so. I mean, we'll, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot could happen. Anyway, we're obviously very excited about it. Is the chat? Uh, you haven't looked at the chat. Uh, <laughs> the chat? Yeah, but I'm on. I'm, on I'm Twitter. wondering how the chat. I, I can. I wonder what what how what's the temperature? Are you guys excited like we are about it? Are you skeptical? Um, what do you think about the Mandalore? Do you like the do you like the fact that the Mandalorian is the title and is the focus. What say you guys? Go ahead. Um, but we're going to move on here to our next story in canon, which is. which is Star Wars Resistance, which debuts this Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. I have not had a chance to view any of it, but I believe both of you have had a chance to take in oh, the correct. first couple yeah. episodes. Mm. Yeah, yep, and first then two. you have some sit down interviews. We're going to talk about. We're going to show both my interviews here in a second here too. But I um I did see episodes one and two as Emma has as well. Um, Here is the difference between The Mandalorian and Resistance. You have to realize this. You have to, when I was out for a couple weeks, I was getting all these tweets about, what'd you think of that trailer? Pretty, uh, pretty kitty, huh? When Lucasfilm was bought by Disney, they have to make so much that the thing is too, there is going to be some stuff that the audience, this is on Disney. This is on, this is not on Disney XD. This is on Disney. Right. My seven year old is going to be able to watch this show and it is geared towards her. I really believe, and, I, and Star Wars fans in general too, but this is really geared towards a younger generation and I think it works. I like the animation. I like the Robotech style. I have to get used to it. It's good setup for the first two. Yeah. But I'm invested so far, and I want to know more. I completely agree with you. I actually think that the advertisements do this show a disservice. I think that the advertisements make it seem a lot more juvenile than it actually is. I, it is absolutely aimed at seven- and eight-year-olds. It's, it's perfect for your daughter. However, it's not talking down to her. It's not talking to kids like they are idiots. And it very much feels like Star Wars. I actually think once the characters you already know get out of the way pretty early on in the first episode, it really gives the new characters that are introduced in this series a chance to shine. And I find them to be very endearing. And I, I, you know, Kaz, who's the main character, is very uh, clumsy. He might be a little over the top for some people, but I, I find him very charming. And another thing that I really like about it is that, and this is not really a spoiler because you find out right away, but basically he, both of his parents are alive, right. which is something we don't see in Star Wars a lot. We haven't met them or anything, but I'm, they've set it up that that's something that's probably going to get explored down the line. And that's not something we see in Star Wars a yeah, whole lot. We see his father briefly. Yeah, yeah sort yeah. of. In a, in a hologram. Yeah. But, but I love that they brought in Oscar Isaac for oh, this. Oh, yeah. Uh, they actually pose voice in it, and they're set up. There's things to be had. And I actually got a chance to sit down with, I'm going to show you two interviews. The first one is Christopher Sean, and he, by the way, I have never met anybody who is as excited <laughs> to be in Star Wars as this dude. I mean, you'll, you'll see it it's in crazy. the interview, but like, I mean, there are, I've had the pleasure uh, and the privilege of interviewing a lot of people in, that have been in Star Wars, sure. and they've all been excited. But this guy, there was a light in his eyes that just interviewing him and seeing that you, you'll see it. And I talked to him um, about his role inside of Resistance, and here we go. 
What's up, Jedi Council fans? I am here. Christopher Shaw, I'm Susan McGrath from Star Wars Resistance. Guys, congratulations on the show. Just got a chance to watch it. And listen, so in regards to where this lands in the time frame of Star Wars, we're getting to learn a lot about the Resistance. And so Kaz is really kind of thrown into this. I think he comes from a long line of, say, whether it be Luke, Ezra, Ray. This is the character we're going to be following through this thing. First of all, tell me a little bit about the responsibility of that and about Kaz in general kind of being thrown into the Resistance. Well, there's a, uh, there's a large amount of pressure that comes with it. However, it's diluted Im immensely by the team because they have such a professionalism about them and such a familial environment that they create that really takes away from that and allows me to just work, which is wonderful. And then, of course, the cast. I mean, you're working with some top talent, Susie, Oscar, Isaac, uh, right. Gwendolyn Christie, uh, Rachel Patero, who plays Princess or uh, General Argana, excuse me, and so many more, uh, Josh Brenner, Miku, <laughs> Scott Lawrence, uh, the list goes on. But, uh, you know, my job is to just do my job, and they provide that for me. I'm trying to learn a little bit, a little bit more about the resistance pro uh, process here because I, I'm, I remember how Rebels was to where they had the cast come in together, have, you know, work together inside um, when you're doing your performances. Is it the same here or is it different? Do you go out, do your separate reads, and then it's pieced in? How does, how does the process work for this show? We do group recordings. Do. Um, so, you know, up to, I mean, I think there's been at least nine, seven to nine people at a time. Oh, wow. Um, and which kind of brings the kind of energy that you don't get on your own, you know? So you definitely get to be able to play off of each other, which is a lot of fun. And, and there's some characters. You can tell so cast. far. Well, I'm glad that they continued on with that because I thought that's what made the other shows so successful was that, that dynamic you can get, you, I'm sure as actors, you feel like the more that they're there with you and it's, it's not just throwing your voice out there for one particular solo thing and see how it's going to be pieced in. You get to feel the emotion. You get to throw it out there. But I wanted to ask you because your character in the beginning, I don't know how it's going to mm -hmm. doesn't like him brushing <laughs> out of the way, get out of my way. Can you tell me a little bit about her and, and what we can expect from her this season? Um, she is an inventive and outspoken and feisty um, mechanic, but she's an aspiring pilot. So I think being part of Team Fireball, um, she's kind of in her element, but she's kind of restless. And I think the restlessness comes when this one comes in and upsets the apple cart um, and starts messing around with things that she thinks is hers. And so I think there's a bit of a power, not a power dynamic, but there's some like territorial. Some, yeah, some territorial sure. issues. Nice. Um, but, I, but time heals, you know, and so I think we can enjoy to see the character really take that journey of like not wanting this person in their life, in their space, um, but to really kind of developing a relationship. But well, does she really not want him around? Does she? I mean, no. <laughs> does not she? really. <laughs> well, as the greatest pilot in the galaxy, I'm sure that that's, uh, that's something. But, you know, and I did want to ask when you found out you were getting Star Wars. I'm mean, sure this question's come up a billion times too, where you. It's Star Wars. It's the biggest, maybe, franchise of all time. Um, and when you hear that, and animated has really popped as well, whether it's Clone Wars and Rebels and uh, Forces of Destiny, all these shows that are popping. When you find out you have this show, is how does it change? It's kind of change your your life. Like it, it, it's 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 a huge job and and a responsibility. Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's a huge job. It's a huge responsibility, and and it's something that uh, that's changed my life. I mean, I've never been happier about a role, ever. You, you know? are beaming, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, Kazuta Ziono, a fun, eccentric, cool character who's super clumsy, and I'm like, that's me. I get to be me in the show. This is wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, nothing better than Star Wars. Nothing. Did you feel the same? Like, how, how, did, you, how did the process go with you as far as getting the role? And well, well um, so just, like, auditioning um, through my agent and going back and being like, oh, you know, I think they like me. And then and then we did a little chemistry reads and I'm like, oh, I think they do like me, you know? <laughs> um, and yeah, and, and so I think very slowly you kind of get used to the idea. And But but it's, it's a surprise even when you book it, you know? You're like, oh, really? And then of course you can't tell anyone, so you have to kind of keep it to yourself, so. <laughs> well, Cat's out of the bag now. Cat is out of the bag. As we, as we start here, as we get into this push, this, the show is debuting. One of the things that's right around the corner is Star Wars Celebration, which hits in um, April, I believe. 
have you heard about Star Wars Celebration? Because the first thing that I had heard about people who were in Rebels, they didn't, ex they didn't, they heard about it, but they didn't really know what it felt like until they were there. Are you anticipating Star Wars Celebration? Are you excited? How do you feel about it? I have heard about it, and I, th it sounds awesome, um, but I just don't think you could ever prepare yourself. Like I don't know, you can't feel it until you do, you know? Right. And have you been to a Star Wars Celebration yet? Not yet. Oh, I'm I so excited. I, I, I hear there's 6,000 <laughs> fans that have more passion than I do about the series, which I thought was impossible, but it is possible. And to be there on stage watching or seeing that, I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if I can even imagine that. I've been to three of them, and I can tell you you're not ready for it. Um, <laughs> and I can't wait. I would love the opportunity to get to speak to both of you afterwards, uh, yeah. Celebration, because it is that, that to me as a Star Wars fan changed and I've been a hardcore Star Wars fan since I was three years old, it changed my love for it because you do see this this love for it. But um, And I think that they're going to embrace this show. Congratulations to you both for doing it. Last thing before I let you go to, what is the one thing that you want fans to take away from Star Wars Resistance after watching the show? Ooh, um, I want fans to take like the essence of being part of a team and being part of a family and trusting in each other. Diversity is family. We all have our own paths that we walk, and yet we can still walk it together. And um, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited for everyone to kind of walk the paths with us and enjoy the story that, that these people, these wonderful people at Lucasfilms have created. Well, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you guys both. Congratulations once again, and I look forward to talking to you after celebration. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to Christopher Sean and Susie McGrath, who I got a pleasure of sitting down and talking to. As you see, these guys are very excited to be part of Star Wars, tell them a little bit about their experience, their character, something you guys should check out. And again, it's not going to be for everybody, um, but I also think that if you can lock into this, I'm, I'm actually really hooked on the series already because I, I know exactly what they're going for. Um, I'm invested in it so far. Ken, any interest in, in the series itself? I absolutely have an interest in the series, and I said early on when I saw one of the first trailers, I went, ah, oh, this might be be the first thing that's not necessarily for me in the terms of like I don't know if I'm going to watch this and heavily be heavily invested every week and then more started to pop up and like uh yeah, I love the character of Griff Halloran already, and I haven't even heard him speak. And it's our buddy Stephen Stan, but just this old crusty ex Tie Fighter. Probably I'm intrigued by that. Uh, and again. Go to the first couple episodes of Star Wars Rebels, and we got Ezra walking around stealing fruit on Lothal. If you would have told me then that the series would give us Sabine's epic emotional therapeutic breakdown in season three, Ahsoka fighting Vader, Obi-Wan killing Maul, I would have been like, that series? Yeah. This could grow with his audience as well. And, and you know, is animation just for kids? No, of course not. We all know this. Yeah. Um, uh, but I watched Bojack... A horseman with whiskey in my hand. No, animations <laughs> for everybody. But this is about the next generation, and that's important for Lucasfilm. Uh, you know, we were at your birthday party because I got invited over the weekend, and, and, and your daughter is sitting there quizzing me on Star Wars. She quizzing was, me on yeah. Star Wars, and she's got her little book that was the easiest guide to the galaxy or whatever it was in it. <laughs> It was amazing, and that is important to me. That is important to me. You should have seen it. It was actually really, like, his, his sometimes, you know, someone comes running up, like, a little kid comes up, he's like, right, what I got to do now? He's just like, all right, what you got? And, like, and, and she comes yeah. out with this, like, she's read that book so many times. Yeah. She's read this Chewbacca book. Oh. Right. She, she, it, it, she is obsessed right now yeah. with Star Wars again. She hasn't seen one of the movies in, like, six months. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah. And that's just good parenting on your yeah. part. But that, that's what's important. It's important for all of us. If you go to a convention, you see a 10-year-old you know, girl dressed as, as, as Ray or Kylo Ren or, you know, see a 4-year-old kid dressed as Orson Krennic, as I saw at <laughs> a celebration last year. Like, that's part of this. That's yeah. part of this. Yeah. Can I, I, this is a really quick story that I just want to share because it has to do with kids in Star Wars costumes. So my, my friend's son, who's four, is currently obsessed with the music from mm. Star Wars. So he asked cool. his mom who does the music for Star Wars and for Jurassic Park? And she's like, oh, it's John Williams. And then a couple days later, he says to his dad, he's like, dad, I think I want to be someone from Star Wars um, for Halloween, like uh, the girl with the robot or, oh, you know what? John Williams, that's who I want to be. <laughs> I want to see a four-year-old kid dressed as John Williams. <laughs> like a black got turtleneck. That, yes. got the head. Slick his hair. Oh, that's amazing. Please Slick get some, pictures. No, I will. It. I totally will. No, they've decided he has to be John that's, Williams. That's amazing. 100% just conducting yes. everywhere he goes. Um, all right, the other interview that I had a chance to so if you guys know, A, if you've been following Jedi Council for a long time, we had uh, the great Bobby Moynihan from from Saturday Night Live fame. He's been on Jedi Council before. He has been, um, he's done a review with us. He has done a ton of things with us. 
And Donald Faison, who has not yet been on this show, but Come on, we, Donald. we met him. He watches. I know he's watching right now. We, yeah. we met him at the Force Awakens premiere, and I saw him. And I was like, of course I know who Donald Faison is. And I walk over, and he goes, Jedi Council. And I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. And every time I see him now at the premieres, we sit and we talk, and, we, and we, we talk about Star Wars and his love of Star Wars. This guy is a hardcore Star Wars fan. I mean, he is in it. And I had, a, I had the pleasure of sitting by both these guys, and I got a nice warm welcome from them when I walked in the room, and we just kind of chatted it up, and here you go. All right, guys, this is something I've been looking forward to for a long time, Jedi Council, obviously. I'm here with my boys. I'm here with my boys here, Donald Faison and Bobby Moynihan. Guys, what's going on? What's up, man? Good to what's see happening? you. You were both holding out secrets for a long time. Yeah, yeah. You knew you so. were on Jedi yeah. Council, and you you knew yeah. it, and you you faked me out on Rebels. You knew it was coming, and you yeah. asked the question yeah. about, is that the next series? Yeah, yeah. How long did you know? Or when, did you, when did you go in for it? And how'd you uh, I, this is something I didn't go in for, actually. This is something, Dave actually wrote this character specifically for me. Hype Phazon? Hype Phazon, really? Phazon, yeah. <laughs> the Phazon name will live in the Star Wars galaxy. Yeah. You, know, you must have lost your mind, because you are, and for people, since Huge our first fan. time in Jedi Council together, yeah. we've talked many times about Star Wars, yes. people know, you are like a hardcore Star Wars yes. maniac. I am a fan. Yeah. I, don't, I don't necessarily know names of planets and stuff like that, oh. but my life is lived by uh, the Star, if, if, if George was trying to start a religion, I was one of the first yeah. people to sign up. And so, Bobby, same thing. Was I've to, never seen it. you never seen Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, back to you, Hype. Right, right. Uh, so when it comes to Star Wars, as we were talking last time. Yeah. Um, I knew you, when I talked to you and couldn't say anything, and it okay. was awful. Yeah, you, but you were... Because you, all were, you want to do is talk about it. Right. And so let's talk about it a little bit. This, this show is set... <laughs> yeah, now we're done. No, it's getting a little. But we're set, well, we're set before Force Awakens. And so as we get into this, two both... Because you're playing, you're playing a bunch of characters. Well, I play... I play one main character. I play Orca. Uh, okay. There's a there's a um, in the in the show in Star Wars Resistance. There is a, a platform called the Colossus. It's uh, this this sort of hub where all the racers and and, and everybody you know are fix their ships and, and it's like know, a truck stop. Yeah, like a truck stop. Thank you. Um, and uh, I play Orca, and Jim Rash plays Flix. Uh, we are. We work in the acquisitions department downstairs in the basement. We sell parts, and we're just kind of like the go-to guys uh, 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 to get all that stuff. Yeah. Well, so one of the things too, as I'm watching this, we I saw both the episodes, and I saw I saw the character, and I and I was listening for you, and I and like the, the. But I do I do play a couple different characters, but it's. I couldn't find you in the first episode, but I knew this when Orca popped that up. That makes me happy. Yeah, in the second, and I'm Orca. The little, I'm the goat man in the bar. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay. Uh, uh, he's a goat hole. His name is Yanni. Yes. Hole. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there, so there you go. <laughs> but, but what I was saying about both of you guys because we all have children. Um, and what I thought about this show, what I think is special about it, is when Disney ac took the acquisition of, of Lucasfilm, we have to accept the Star Wars fans. They're going to make it for everybody. And initially, it was meant for children. I like that this one reminded me of growing up, like watching Robotech, and just like it's more. I think it's more geared towards that kind of Saturday morning cartoon thing. But is this something you feel is for all generations? Maybe geared towards younger kids. Something you can show your kids. Because how do you feel about it? I think I think if we if we just focus on what Star Wars was originally for, it was geared toward young kids. And if you keep it that way, we're gonna get what we have right now, where we're adults and we're still talking about Star Wars and stuff like that. The minute you take it away from the youth, in my opinion, yeah, the minute you take it away from them is the minute that... It's uh, hard, it's it like geared towards youth is such a, it's not, that's, I feel like that's not what this is. It's a little bit. Like, sure. like yeah. it's, it is, uh, obviously, but I feel like that's just the wrong term. This is geared towards Star Wars, if that makes right. any sense. Like, this is, it's, yes, kids will enjoy it, and, the, and that's what, these, that's what this is for. George, I said earlier, George Lucas went to go see Flash Gordon as a kid, right. and like, came up with all of this, and now we get to enjoy it, and that's what kids are going to do when they see this, hopefully. But, when we were kids, we had the three movies, and mm -hmm. this is, the, it's a brand new Star Wars universe. There's a lot of Star Wars stuff out right now, but this is, it's its like, they've just dropped down so much, right. <laughs> and there's so much new stuff, and its it's not about Jedis, it's about the people who work and the people the who are just trying to make it by. But that's like why I said it's like it's like Cantina, the show. Yeah, like well, that's well, that's why I dug guys. about it. I dug. I, I like the idea that we're now because we're filling in gaps of how we got. Because I've I read all the books and learning about how what happened with the New Republic, but really learning how the Resistance starts to build up, and they're the ones that learn uh, about the First Order, and they're looked at as radicals. And we know what happens in Force Awakens; they they were the smart ones. Um, but learning that because you guys are Star Wars heads, do, do you try? 
why you just, the gaps start to get filled and you're reading the scripts going this is this is incredible this is I wanted to learn this because this is kind of you can geek out even if you weren't on the show yeah I spend a lot of time well when you read it you go like well first of all like when I first saw the pilot and realized like I'm in a scene with BB-8 and I went like oh my god I'm in a scene with BB-8 yeah, right, right. like you know what I mean like a weird that's weird enough alone but you start to go what I, my problem is I start to go like oh, wait a minute so technically, I'm a my character Orca right. is alive during which of my favorite Star Wars characters could I possibly have a story? Have, with? Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. what what adventure? How do I know that Porkins doesn't show up? <laughs> you know, and and him and him and Orca drive go get a sandwich. Right, you know? Orca <laughs> like, is dead, dude. I know. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, but we I don't know how old you're I'm back in the day. I'm Tommy Porkins, his son. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Tommy which I, which I am now going to announce that I'm playing in the Star Wars movies, <laughs> but it's not the truth. Tommy game. Porkins coming I'm in. Tommy huh? Porkins in um, the movies. Last question for you guys, too, because you've been tight with Dave Filoni for a little bit. I don't know if you knew Dave before going in. I was a fan. I met him through the, through through the process. process. Okay. Yeah. So do you guys, like, just, because to me, I've always called him, like, the heir apparent. Do you start to see, I know he created, he's creator of the show, I know that we have different executive producers this round, but do you get a chance to talk to him, get his insight? I haven't spoken to him really about it. You know, that's the great, that's one of the awesome things about Dave is if you really have questions, he'll sit down and he'll explain it to you in detail what you're looking for. We haven't had the, I haven't, I, maybe you have. I've had, had a little bit of interaction with him. I got to go visit the, you know, go visit the offices where they're making the show. Yeah. And I, I went into the Star Wars show and, and uh, got to got to visit a, a bunch of people and see what they were, you know, what they were doing and, and sit down with Dave. And he showed me the scene for the first time of my characters. Oh, cool. And we just talked for a, a bunch. And he's just so he knowledgeable in this. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, what I remember most about Dave is, like, you meet, he's this, geniusly creative person who's giving us these amazing Star Wars stories and I had a recording session with him recently and and um, in that recording session we talked a lot about Star Wars a lot about characters and you just see the passion in his eyes and he drew my character just really quick on the thing and you're just like this look at this man he's yeah. so Talented. Like yeah. everything is just everything about him is just like he's he's the guy who makes this and he's the guy who makes so many people happy. So you get I get nervous yeah. when I'm there. Like I want to like I want to do a good job because he it means so much to him, which makes me happy because I know it means a lot to us. Right. So well, I don't know him that well at all, well, but like I wish he was my dad. My first like, <laughs> <laughs> my first time meeting him, I didn't know what to say, and I was like, what do I gonna, what, do, what am I going to say to him? What do, what do I what do I bring up? What do I say? What do I say? Wow! And I finally get to give it to him. Yo, so Clone Wars is amazing, mm -hmm. dude. What made you think of that? And he went into detail on yeah. what he thought yeah. and, and everything. And five seconds into it, I wasn't listening anymore. I was just sitting there. I was like, wow, the dude who created Star Wars, uh, who created Clone Wars, and who created Rebels is having a conversation with mm -hmm. me about something I asked. Guys, congratulations on the show. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, I'm excited for both of you guys. Thank you. you. Know, and we're going to get you on Jedi Council to talk about it again. And we'll do it. You keep yeah. saying yes, we're going to get you. I and I, I believe you. On, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at keeping secrets. I can't keep a secret yeah. in my life. Thanks again to Bobby Moynihan and Donald Faison. Love those guys. So excited for both of them. Um, and yeah, that's it. Resistance comes out this weekend. Check it out. Now, I do want to get to you guys. We went on over to the Collider Jedi Council Facebook group. We went to the Twits, and we went to hashtag Collider Jedi Council. And there's some people live right now in the YouTube chat. Ken Napsai is going to pick out about three or four today because okay. we're limited. Ken, what do you got? I like that. Just like I like this tangerine look. You like that? <laughs> All right, I do. We like better, um, tangerine or apricot? Uh, apricot. Okay. I didn't want to mm. go to your car. Right. Passion um, fruit is my favorite flavor. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's All really right. good. It, right. You can get it at Costco. You know, I love, I, as much as I love it, I'm, I'm not, those guys, not once they reached out to me, so I'm not giving them a sponsor. That's a good <laughs> idea. There. All right, live on Twitter, we got Sports Sheev at Sportsman Sheev. Do it. Uh, he says, how many references do you think the, the new show, The Mandalorian, mm -hmm. will have? Do you think they'll talk about Boba, Django, Django, mention bounty hunters like Boss, Cad, Bane? Do you think we'll see the dark saber? This gives a chance to talk a little bit more about what we might th think is in this series. Tons. Oh, tons. Yeah. Most of that stuff that you mentioned, absolutely, whether it's in a short reference or a complete storyline around mm -hmm. it, once you have Filoni involved, 
Yeah. 100%. Wait, look for all the Easter eggs that are going to be inside of his episode that he directs. And then, like you were saying before, how Favreau was so locked into the series and uh, to this thing in general, yeah. he's going to be doing stuff too. He wants to tie it all together. He wants to know the history of the mail. He's not just going to make up his own stuff. He will make up his own stuff, but he's not just going to do that. Sure. He's going to tie it all together. So I think there's going to be tons of references, not only for that, but then you look at something. What I liked about Battlefront 2, the game, was the way that there was a lot of tie-ins to the original trilogy. I think because of this time period, we're going to get stuff like that too. We'll get mentions of Leia. We'll get mentions of Han and Luke. Now, whether we'll see anyone portray them, I don't know. Yeah. But we'll certainly hear it. I, yeah, this will be a ton of references. Yeah, absolutely. Agree? I mean, th this exists in an interesting period within the Star Wars canon timeline that has been explored in books, but never really been explored on screen. So I think that the, the doors are, are wide open. And also, you know, seeing the continuation of some characters that kind of carried over from Clone Wars to Rebels, I'd love to see Hondo Onaka show I was up gonna, in there. I was going to say, Hondo, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think you have to mention some of this stuff. Uh, the state of the galaxy after the fall of the Empire is yeah. a very interesting time. I think Wendig, Wendig does a great job in Aftermath. Just kind of That's one of the big victories of that book. Is It's it's not a clean-cut victory on Endor, no. and so here's this stuff that's happening. And on Tatooine itself, that's why this character of Cobb Vanth rises as a, as a town sheriff to fight these syndicates and, and, and mining concerns that kind of have a, ooh, there's a vacuum of power. Let's go into it. I can see the Mandalorian dealing with that kind of stuff. Again, Bo-Katan, Darksaber, some of that kind of stuff. Where are the Mandalorians during the Galactic Civil War is a great question, and I think we might finally start to get some of those answers. Totally. All right, what's next? All right, this question comes from Kevin Smets at oh, like uh, KOTR Aww. underscore Trilogy. He asks us uh, an episode nine question. I like this one. He says, do you think the decision to use some of the footage of Carrie Fisher from seven and eight for late episode nine, uh, that they'll actually use this as a smokescreen slash backdoor to sneak in some CGI shots or even scenes if the story requires it? The concept being, well, most of it was old footage, but we needed to fill some shots. Will this and will this be accepted? Uh, no. Uh, here's here's the reason why is because um, they this that Kathleen Kennedy would get called out if this happens because she definitively said this will not happen. You can't do that. You can't say we're not going to do that and then do it. It's a difference between like. JJ going, no, it's not con, as opposed to saying, we're not going to do that because they're going to use old footage. They're not going to do anything along that. They're just going to try something completely different. Yeah I, yeah, I think the only way that they would kind of sneak in some backdoor stuff, it would be more like voiceover and possibly CGI in some sort of hologram format if they really, really needed to fill something in. But overall, I, I agree, it's it's not going to be CGI. And thank goodness. Yeah, it, I mean, it'll be tough, right? It'll be tough because at some point you have to kind of you know, what, what, what do they have? The question is, what do yeah. they have on the cutting room floor? Mostly from seven, maybe. Maybe from eight. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. They, they've been so, and, and, and Todd Fisher, so just like, on like, this is old footage, not CGI. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised, you know, me, movie magic. Yeah. A couple shots here and there. All right, final one here. Right, last one, yeah. Last the question. I want to make sure I go to the Facebook group. This is from Caitlin Marie Summers. We've seen documentaries like Empire of Dreams, which is great. L Street 1976, also great. Made about the making of the first Star Wars movie in the trilogy, and Disney made Saving Mr. Banks a story behind his classic. Mary Poppins, should Lucasfilm and Disney consider making yeah. a dramatization of the life of George Lucas or the story behind Star Wars? If, or, if so, uh, who would be your casting choice for George Lucas? Oh. Now we Do saw, an actual movie of it? We saw like, uh, George Lucas in Love, Tim Dowling uh, in the USC film back in 99. I, I mean, Alonzo Duralde would be yeah, great right. George Lucas um, uh, I don't know I, don't, I mean I have to see who's going to do the casting yeah. of it but yeah. I, I love the question but yeah, yeah no, I, I, I totally agree. And I, I, I'd be down for a Saving Mr. I worked on Saving Mr. Banks, actually. Yeah. I'm in the background of some of the scenes of it, and it was really fun to work on. So I'd love to see something yeah. similar it, happen with Star Wars. It'd be interesting. I don't know if they're, the, the, the drama is not there as much. Sure. Um, but hey, that's, you know, turn it into drama. It'd yeah. be kind of fun as far as playing it. I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll eat some more Del Taco and I'll, I'll play them. I'll, I'll play them. <laughs> All right, well, that's the show for today. That is Jedi Council. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'd like to thank the great panel we had today. Miss Fife Diaz, thank you so much for joining yes, us today. Yes, thank you, Where can you find uh, so much for having me. I am all over the internet wherever Emma Fife's are sold, at my name, Emma <laughs> Fife. <laughs> and Mr. Ken Napsaw, Kylo Ken. Thanks for having me, friend. Thanks for sharing your beverage. Follow me at Ken Napsa across all social media platforms. Make sure you check out uh, this Schmodown tournament, the ultimate Schmodown anarchy. It's going down every Tuesday and Friday. And in a couple weeks from now, the big title match between Bibiani and Roca, it goes down. 
Go over there. Check it out. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. May the force be with you, always. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here, or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.